Good evening, folks. I've been meaning to do this for quite some time. I got this book for Christmas last year, and I've been wanting to read it all year. I've pretended that I started reading it, um, but I decided I wanted to make like a vlog book review and share the experience with you. Um, anyway, so cheers. It is a Saturday night. And um, I have some dinner here, and my husband is racing, and I'm playing it on the TV. And so in between the races, I'm going to start this book. There's a couple, re well, a few reviews back here. Um, from One from Jennifer Garner, Amy Sherman Pal Palladino, Hilary Duff, and Lauren Graham. But yeah. My niece got this for me. It's the signed edition. Uh, this is her signature. I watched Sutton Foster on Younger. And um, then when I found out that she crochets, I was like, she's my best friend in my head. Did you ever watch Wendy Williams? Know about the best friend in your head thing? Yeah. She's my best friend in my head. And one day I do hope to meet her. And I think... Um, it would be really cool to like crochet alongside her. Why not? This sweater looks really freaking cool too. Um, yeah, so, uh, oh, look at this one in the back. That is a cute one. This is probably not the best, uh, visual. How cute the, <gasps> it's a crochet hook on there. Oh, oh my gosh, that's adorable. And this, like, that, like, that looks so cute, too. This is really cute book. Sutton Foster is an American actress, singer, and dancer. She's best known for her work on the Broadway stage, for which she has received two Tony Awards for Best Performance by a Leading Actress in a, in a Musical. On television, Sutton played the lead role in the ABC family comedy drama Bunheads and TV Land's Younger. Yay! Okay, I'm going to get started. Okay, so I just read the intro, and it's not very long. It's like um, one, two, three, four pages. Um, I love her intention behind this book. I'll just read the last part of it of what it is. I wrote this book for my mother and my daughter. The first so I might better understand her. The second so she might better understand me. And then she had like a few um, pieces of advice where she spoke for a commencement speech at a graduating class. And I loved all the advice. Um, I'm just, I feel like I'm definitely going to be crying in this book after reading that intro. Okay, so I just read the first chapter. It's not like necessarily split up and designated like name, name chapters, but they are like chapters like any book with titles, you know. Um, so there's like 16 of them. Um, so this first this first chapter was called, um, crafting a family affair. Um, so she basically just talked about how she got into theater, which is a lovely story. And it's crazy to hear like the family dynamic. And, um, I love to hear that she was like a really <laughs> hyper child. Um, I feel like when I was a kid, I had a desire to get into acting and modeling and well, not necessarily modeling, I guess acting. I, I wanted to be a teacher and then I also wanted to um, be an actor, but um, my parents didn't necessarily encourage those things either. So um, I didn't ever do really any theater. I did some speech and debate later, like in high school, but, um, yeah. And then after high school, I've done, I did some modeling and stuff later, but I wouldn't say I did anything in a professional level as Sutton Foster has. 
Um, and I, I, yeah, amazing. It, it blows my mind when like these, when parents can just see that in like special thing in their kid and encourage that thing. And then when kids just know, and then they keep going towards that one thing, because I've always been such a versatile person. I've always loved like literally everything. Um, so it's hard for me to just pinpoint one thing in my whole life. All right. Well, Jeff is about to race, so I'm going to head out before I, um, read the next chapter. Okay. I foresee myself like finishing this whole book tomorrow. Um, she is just, it's so easy to read, um, what an interesting life and I just feel invested in it, in her family and her story now, you know? Um, so it seems like she moved around a lot. Like, okay. So I read the second chapter and it's called, uh, tomato, tomato, what is it called tomato plants. Yeah. Um, and what's funny is that at the end, like, um, her dad has, like, tips for growing the perfect tomato, which is fantastic. Um, I feel like my husband has been wanting us to get into some gardening, and it would be great to, like, be able to eat from, like, our own makes which would be so cool. I may, I grew a pumpkin this year with, it's the teeniest, tiniest pumpkin, but I learned how to, um, what is the proper word? Like there's a male and there's a female type of flower and I played the role of the bee because the bees weren't around. But I did, I got one little pumpkin and I feel like so, I mean, I felt like that was such an accomplishment. So to be able to like make other things that we could eat would be so satisfying. So I think um, that is pretty cool. Uh, the sadness starts in this chapter. Um between like the division of her parents. I feel like I kind of grew up in a way like that where my uh, parents had a lot of tough love and like they didn't necessarily share lots of like affection with one another or whatnot. But my parents are still together. Um, and I moved around a lot being a military like Air Force brat. So... I feel like I can relate to that aspect as well. This next chapter is called Basket Case. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, so that was definitely the longest chapter so far. Um, and it was very intense. Um, I feel like it's not that like she experienced bullying per se in that but just feeling like always being the outcast um I felt that I felt that a lot like all being I was always being the new girl everywhere and you always have to go through this kind of hazing thing and then no matter what you do it still doesn't mean you're ever going to be in the group and part of the group um so you just like, and then it's like chaos at home too. So you just kind of like find your own joys. And for her, it was cross-stitching. And I love to hear the details of like um, the cross-stitches she did. And like, um, okay, so she was saying in here she did like a Christmassy one. Uh, and she also did like the baskets one. And she just describes the colors and 
I don't know. I love cross stitching too. It's been a while. I've been working on this and, and I don't know if you follow me on Instagram, you would probably have seen a while back. I had posted like a reel or something of one of the longest, oldest whips that I have is actually a cross stitch project. It's of Marilyn Monroe. And I, I originally started it thinking it was going to be a gift, but psh, that will never be a gift. If I ever finish it is all mine because, um, it's a black and white piece and it's way discolored compared to what it originally was going to be. And I'll probably have to wash it before, but it's taken this many years. I mean, it's probably going to take a whole lot more effort to even get completed, but, um, yeah, I'm all, I'm going to keep that for myself and be staring at it. Like, wow. And it's just wild to think, like, for her, how she talks about, like, how her projects, like, she can remember the memories of where she worked on those projects and what those projects got her through. Um, I make so many things now that I don't necessarily remember them all in that way, but I do have a lot of memories within each thing that I make. And I love to keep my things with me traveling wherever I go. Um... I'm not ashamed to make anywhere that I go. So the next chapter is called Dada's Blanket. And um, that sounds like it's going to be a cute one. There's like a recipe at the end of this one too. I love all these little tips that are in this book. What a thoughtful book, I tell you. It is well after midnight. So I'm going to go ahead and save the rest of this. I want to keep on reading and I probably could stay up all night and not sleep and just finish this whole thing and be so happy about it. But um, I think I look forward to making a cup of coffee in the morning and getting going back on this. So I'll see y'all in the morning. Good morning! Time for that said coffee. I like to add my cream and sugar before brewing. And this morning I also threw in a bit of cappuccino powder. How do you like your coffee? Or are you a tea or soda drinker? What is your morning ritual? Normally I'm not so excited about morning activities. If it weren't for this coffee and my injured toe, I'd be running to read this book. Good morning. I am not generally a morning person. I have already guzzled down that entire mug of coffee. It was very delicious. And I don't even feel like I needed that extra buzz because uh, we are now in daylight savings time and we technically got an extra hour, although it didn't affect me in any way. I still like it'll be an adjustment for me to go with sleep and usually and my dog has diabetes and so I have to give her medicine twice a day. So it's an adjustment for her too on transitioning her medicine time wise. But um all that to say is that I'm not normally a morning person, so for me to think to get up and start reading and using my brain immediately in the morning is something else. And I, that's exactly what I did, though. I And I drank that coffee, and I feel even more revitalized. I've read the Dada's Blanket chapter, and I'm telling you, I'm falling right back in all over again um, from last night. AK this morning. Um, I feel like it's just so relatable in the sense that I am kind of currently on a falling out with my own parents. And sometimes it makes me feel sad just because, um, you know, you look around and you see like the dynamic of some other families and my family has never really been that, but it's always been like growing up. We were always being in a military family and always moving around. All we had was each other, but they didn't ever allow me to just be me. And they didn't ever really encourage me 
they just, they wanted me to be what they wanted me to be. And I still feel like that's what they want. Always. So, and I feel like naturally I can be pessimistic and I, and I get that a lot from the way I was raised and how they are. And I say pessimistic, but some of it is just like a realist. I have to prepare myself for the worst because I just can't handle like the mega disappointment. Anyway, and then also within this too, I get, I feel like I get little triggers too about how she references her experiences with like Christianity. I guess she grew up, you know, pe Presbyterian. Um, and there's also, you know, like Christian ways and um, things that are said to be sins and whatnot. I feel, I feel that all too well, like on the, on the way that I was raised and, um, I would say my parents were more open-minded. Like we probably watched a lot of things um, that we weren't supposed to, um, but it was always a learning lesson. Being in an Asian family, I feel that too. It's like everything is always a learning lesson. There is no, no moment of just to be free and have a little bit of fun. Um, yeah. Anyway, so... I guess at, um, there, there's obviously more within this chapter. It, it was a li little bit longer of a chapter, but I feel like there was still more in the storytelling of the previous chapter. Definitely way more pages in that chapter looking back. Um, but there were, yeah. So at the end of this one, I said that there was a recipe and, um, it's her Aunt Mary Ann's fudgy bonbons. She said, um, coffee's getting me. She said, my Aunt Mary Ann won the Pillsbury Bake Off contest in 1994 when the grand prize was $50,000 and a full kitchen remodel. Isn't that amazing? What a prize to win. I guess it was like on the news and everything. She said, fun fact, in 1996, the prize money jumped to a million. What? Like... And this is the recipe. I want to make it. I'm not like that big into fudgy bonbons. But I feel like, you know, it's getting to holiday season again. And um, I mean, it's been many years, since, especially since the pandemic, that we have done any like Christmas parties or anything like that. Um, but I feel like that would be something that would be great to like exchange for like gifts. Cause I know my in-laws, they have some Christmas parties that we all attend like as family members and everybody gives something. So there are some people, they made like jams. I've crocheted some things and I've also made something like cooked some things before, uh, moms made some things and so I feel like that's something that, like, somebody used to make this cinnamon, like, candy stuff. Oh, my God, I love that stuff. Uh, miss it. So I feel like that's, like, a thing that would be really good to have for, like, giving during holiday exchanges. Why am I so touchy and handsy and stuff? Okay, next chapter, Shattered Girl. I'm nervous about reading this. I feel like as it's going, I'm getting more invested and feeling more emotional. And um, it's wild to see like how open she is to sharing her life. And also reading this, finding out that she has a more introverted space to her. Um, it's crazy because I feel like a lot of people think of me as extroverted um, but I've always grown up and in my adult life, I think I mask it a lot more. Uh, but when I was younger growing up, I was very, very shy. And even though I can be boisterous, I still feel those moments. Um, yeah. And since the pandemic, I'm definitely way more comfortable being home than getting out and about and socializing with people. So I love people, don't get me wrong. I love meeting people and hanging out with 
people that enjoy the things that I do. But um, I also love hanging out by myself and reading books and yarning and watching TV shows and stuff. <sighs> this is a chatty one. And all my video angles might be like this. What do you guys think about this kind of re book review type of thing and maybe learning more in depth about me? Which also makes me nervous because... Um, my husband has told me he maintains contact with my parents and my husband has told me that my dad watches my YouTube videos. So my dad might be seeing this, which gives me a little bit of anxiety to think about. Anyway, I'll leave it at that. I swear each chapter I read feels like a book in itself. Like, you know, when you go to school and you learn, you know, um, intro body and conclusion like you basically are opening up what the story is going to be about then you talk about the story then you seal it all in the end I feel like she does that so well for each chapter so like the titles really pop at the end of each chapter and like you're like oh yeah that makes sense why she titled it, it that so um, this one the shattered girl is actually about like an art piece that she did was which was stolen, which is freaking crazy. I I love just imagining what whether a person out there, the person that stole it, like what they think now, thinking, oh my gosh, I stole this art piece of you know whether they even know who Sutton Foster is like. I mean, how could they not? But to think, I don't know. And I love her spin on it, how she thought of it as, wow, somebody's thought that, that that my art piece was so valuable that it was worth breaking into a car and getting. And um, just, I felt like she took it so well. And like, she felt that relief that it was, it was such a big piece that she didn't need to carry it along with her anymore. And then, um, you know, she got a boyfriend in this time and then also got rid of the boyfriend in this time. And I, I felt what she was saying too, how like she ended up being with a guy that was somewhat problematic because it seemed familiar to her and, um, yeah, I'm happy to see, I feel like it's setting it up for, you know, more steps in her journey. She was also talking about jobs and plays and how she um, was trusting her gut to not go with, I'm trying to drink more water right now because I'm finding that, um, I have like a headache coming on today. I ripped my toenail off and it's just been a whole healing journey and I'm feeling lazy being laid up, but it's the only thing I have to keep my foot elevated because after a while, I, this morning, I did some things yesterday, organized my craft area and um, this is like total side story, but nothing to do with the book review but yeah I did some things yesterday organizing my craft room area and I just noticed this morning like my foot is swollen and my toenail toe is throbbing again so this is like the perfect thing to be doing just laid back sipping on hydrating myself and um reading on a Sunday it's beautiful um, so this next chapter is called Crazy Family DNA. I'm interested in knowing what this chapter is going to hold since I feel like I ended the last chapter feeling chipper. But the title of that sounds like this is going to be more um, family trauma things to discuss and how that affects her growth. Um Anyway, yeah, I'm already on page 62. 
Okay, so that chapter was not near as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, it actually still has me pretty chipper. And, you know, I have a friend that said that they that she loved reading this book, um, but she didn't, like, read the actual book like this. She, like, listened to the audio book, and it was actually Sutton Foster reading the audio book. Um, and I think, oh my gosh, that must be even more magical than just reading the words on here. To hear her actually, like, read this chapter, I feel like, would be so good. Because this chapter was basically just talking about, like, her winning the Tony Awards and, like, um, just being just so grateful and also getting therapy over the traumas with her family and stuff, um, like starting that journey. So even though I'm telling you about pieces of this book, I just want to make clear that I'm not telling you everything because this is obviously a book that you would you would purchase. Um, on the binding here, it says it's twenty eight dollars in U S. and thirty five Canada. Um, I don't know what it what it is at places. This was a gift, but I've got to say you've got to read this. You've got to really experience the feeling of it, and especially if you're a Sutton Foster fan, um, you would love to know her journey. And like from her first hand. So um, I'm not trying to give anything away. There's like a whole lot in here. Uh, also, you know, I was talking about how in that last chapter that she had been with a problematic guy. So she's with like a better guy in this chapter. Um, and I love that for her too. Even though her mother would consider that a sin. <laughs> so much so that she ignored it. <sighs> okay, I can't stop. On to the next. I can't even break away while I'm heating up something to eat. <laughs> Is it weird to be sitting at the counter while standing at the counter and reading? It's that good. Well, I guess I'm, now I'm outside <laughs> carrying and reading this book. Um, it's actually like in a position now where I can just leave the book open and not be worried about pages flipping or anything like that. And it just will lay flat for me to be able to read, which is nice um, when I was on, at the counter, but my dog wants to get some nice vitamin C. I thought she needed to come out in here and potty, but I guess not. Um, the sun is nice, so it's okay. It is nice out here. Maybe I should pull up a chair and we can chill and read outside. I'd have to sit in the sun because this breeze is a little bit chilly. Um, so this chapter, she gets engaged and married to that sweet man, but then they get divorced and she gave recipes for cookies that she got from his mom's, from his mom. And then some, also some beef stroganoff that, you know, was one of the only recipes I think that she had learned from her mom. And, um, yeah, it was mostly a lot about like the joys of cooking and then family, realizing family, like different family dynamics. And that's how I feel like I've experienced and I've built new traditions like, with my husband's family, you know, um, like I've recognized how other families can have different dynamics and different relationships that I've had and, um, yeah, different traditions. And I don't know if I necessarily have any traditions myself. I guess there is some on like different things that I cook, but, um, I don't have any like little children to be baking Christmas cookies with or anything like that. Um, what else was in, there was something, I feel, I don't know. I feel like it's hard to, like she was talking about like the transitioning with, you know, her family accepting 
the married family situation and um also her having to accept like her mother's illness um and I feel like in some ways things like that like taking doing therapy could help me process things like that and accepting my parents the way that they are and being able to move forward um But I don't know. At the same time, I'm like, I'm 37 years old and I just don't want to be around the negativity or judgment anymore. And I feel like maybe it's them that should do a change. And why is it that I'm always having to do a change? I don't know. I'm sure a therapist could say something about all that. But, um, yeah, I feel like in some ways my parents have done the same where it's like they couldn't accept, like, my stepkids as like their kids and they so they've missed out on those grandkids and I feel like my parents have always just wanted me to provide grandkids for them um and like that's my only purpose for them at this point in my adult life and I'm not but realistically they have some they just choose to not take that on because it's not their DNA I didn't birth them myself but that doesn't make them any less than part of my family. I love being um, a stepmom and having grandkids that way. Baby girl, you ready to come inside? The next chapter is called, um, let's see here, Failed Projects. Ooh, we all know how that is. Maybe I'm inspired or maybe it's just time. I gotta make, um, well, start prepping for dinner. And I've decided on Olive Garden chicken. I don't know if you guys have ever had this before. Uh, you can make it in the crock pot or Instapot. I'm gonna do this one in the crock pot, but I'm also doing it with bow tie noodles because why not? I love bow tie noodles, but it legit only takes three ingredients. And what you know about them red lobster biscuits? Okay. Uh, so while my chicken defrosts a little bit, we are going to read this. That had to have been the shortest chapter in this entire book. I mean, she literally gives you failed projects for each like genre of thing that she does. So um, one was cross stitching, one was cooking, one was crochet, one was a collage, and oh, brutal. She just said, my first marriage. She didn't even elaborate, just that's how it ended. Okay, so she elaborated a little bit in this chapter with the divorce blanket. Um, I feel like at the start of my yarning, I'd made lots and lots of blankets and scarves and stuff like that. So some of that reminded me of that, like just going through the course of life and not knowing what those things are going to be or whatever. And I mean, she was making like granny squares and stuff. I actually made granny squares way later because I was one of those people at the beginning that thought granny squares were just like outdated, but I've come to really love them now. Um... Anyway, so yeah, so she goes through the divorce and then she meets another amazing guy and ends up not working out. But um, it's so funny to read in here too. You're going to find a lot, even with all like the Christianly things, like she says swear words in here and she talks about sex and stuff like that. And I love reading about, I mean, she doesn't go graphic, <laughs> But I love reading all that stuff in books and yeah, especially knowing other people's experiences and how similarly we all evolve. Um, what was the other thing I was, oh, I was also wanting to say, I have not mentioned that like she has a brother. I don't know how I never even realized that she had a brother. <laughs> and that he was also in Broadway. I guess I really just don't know a lot about her and I'm just 
learn. I just know about like, because I never even saw this Bunheads show. Uh, and I did not realize that that is the same person that did Gilmore Girls. So now I feel like I need to go back and watch this Bunheads show. It's just such a strange name for a show. So um, I don't know. I am now halfway into the book. And this chapter, like this is halfway. This chapter is called Badass, an ode to Patti Lapone. So maybe it's going to be a badass chapter. I think that there's kind of a lot of pages in this chapter. So yeah, I, I'm pretty sure. Let me show you like the thickness of it. I should have just kept it a second ago, but oh, oh, right here. That is the thickness of this chapter. Here we go. I am um, loving this chapter. Um, I have come to accept that I just don't believe really in idols anymore, but it is so fun to see like what gets somebody in a certain field and like in this kind of situation where becomes somebody becomes like, I mean, now uh, Patty Lapone was, I don't even know if that's how you say her name was, um, her idol and just to see or to read all her experiences with her and like how much she truly idolized her. Um, is it, it, and how like she's become a fan of hers now. And um, anyway, but also in here, oh my gosh, I am like so oblivious. To, I swear to like directors and producers and writers and whatever else. Uh, Jeff, he always keeps up with stuff like that. He'll pay attention to that when watching things, which is crazy. I should totally give credit to, you know, those type, those creatives as well. Um, but I just get, I fall like straight into the fantasy and the, in the story of whatever I'm watching and as if it's real. So I just don't even pay attention to that all the time, which I should. Um, anyway, but I had no idea that this Amy girl was, did also did Marvelous Mrs. May, Maisel. Like what? I love that show too. I have got to watch this Bunheads because clearly I would like it. So there's like a mini chapter within this chapter called Two Badasses Comparing Notes. So, um, I guess I'm going to read that and I'm guessing it's like between, uh, Sutton Foster and, um... Patty Lapone, obviously, since they're the two badasses. Um, but I love I I love this. So um, Sutton Foster just had a rev revelation within this on this journey of finding out how badass she is, and she also gave credit and realized, you know, that her mother was also badass, um, and she said that. Her mantra to this day is, I worked my entire life to be at this moment. I can allow this to be good. It gives me permission to own my talent. It calms me down. I don't have to apologize, make myself small, and I can still be nice while doing it. I love that so much. And um, I meant to read before because I've never heard of this illness that her mom has and she had um described it like not an exact like definition obviously but she had described what it okay right here so um my not my her mother was never officially diagnosed but like her therapist thought she had a character di disorder um, as well as agoraphobia. I don't even know if that's how you read it either, but every time I read it, I think of Angora buddy, bunnies, <laughs> which is totally like off the subject. But um, she said, I looked up character, well, 
not that part. She said, um, so she researched the agoraphobia. To summarize the Mayo Clinic's definition, it's a type of anxiety disorder in which you're so worried about situations that might make you feel trapped, helpless, or embarrassed. And the panic attacks those situations might cause that you stop engaging with the world in order to avoid them. It's hard to treat agoraphobia because in order to get better, you have to face your fears. She's, um, yeah, so I've never heard of that, but anyway, okay, I'm going to go on to this two badasses comparing notes. Um, I think I might, you know, take a little break and vacuum, um, after this little excerpt. I don't know, just to feel like I'm still being productive and not like totally fall totally into this book. I mean, I just can't even, um, it's wild to think like she's just such a great storyteller, but she lived these things and I'm just imagining, I said I was going to go back to reading this, but it just blows my mind. I'm imagining her writing this and how she had to think back and relive each of these moments as if they just happened in that very moment. And I guess she journaled too, so she has those references, but like, I always tried to journal multiple times in my life, and I always found myself doing it more when I'm sad than in those happy moments. Um, and I just never really stuck through it all the time. Uh, my best friend Valerie is starting bullet journaling. And she's like doing... I had no idea that she was like so capable of drawing so well. She's called them like little, you know, scratch scratch doodles. But they, they're way more elaborate and detailed than that. All right, for real. I'll be back though. Oh, I just love that. How many times can I say about how I just love this? Okay, so it was a Zoom chat that they had had. Um, in, in the fall of 2019, I was back in New York. Uh, oh, wait. Okay, wait, no. Okay. Um, yeah, back in New York, married to Ted, and our daughter Emily was just about to start pre-K. The seventh season of Younger was slated to start in March of 2020, and I had also just been cast as Marion in the Music Man opposite Hugh Jackman. Like, I mean, um, yeah, this was all pre-pandemic. So the Music Man was supposed to happen September 2020. Um, so then, uh, she had ran into her, you know, at this restaurant and then asked her number, the Patty Lapone and, um, asked her number. And then she sent her a message asking about interviewing her for this particular book. So she said, I spoke to Patty Lapone from my crafting office room on zoom and she learned, she learned they had more in common than she ever imagined. And uh, the conversations on here were highlights. And it happened December 26, 2020. So that's what's, it's like not, I say it's not that long ago because I feel like, I'm just wildly surprised at how long the pandemic has been. And I, it's, it, I mean, I know it's like a few years, but it's still crazy. Like all that has happened in those few years. But um, what I love about that interview that they did is that, you know, I sit here and I feel like I make so many excuses on how like I may not have 
had the support and encouragement to flourish in the dreams that I had. But you know, those are basically just excuses. Like there are so many people that use that as motivation to do the things that they dream of. Um, yeah. And yeah. And they use that as something to propel them into it. So it's just crazy to re read what I'm saying that I like is that I read, I read those interviews and I'm seeing like, these are like huge successful people that have made a name for themselves, a big name for themselves. And they still feel the same feelings that we have. They still live like the same lives that we have, like the foundation of it all. And, um, you know, like we're all just humans, which means we're all capable of being able to make our dreams reality. So this next chapter is You Rock. And I'm going to go ahead and do a couple chores to move around. Um, I think that this just helps for me to not get too emotional. <laughs> Here I am again saying, oh, that was so cute. Um, I guess her mom tried Xanax and it definitely was helping her mood. And it seems like she was being more of an uplifting mom and encouraging. And that's where the U-Rock comes from. And uh, she, and it, it just tells a story about how she, like the beginnings of dating Ted. early days of relationships. Isn't it so cute? That chapter was the hardest chapter. Oh, I thought I had my shit together by the time I turned this on. Um, I just, I feel so sens sensitive to, um, cancer. So that just was heartbreaking. And then to think like she got engaged too around that same time. And uh, so the chapter was called Owl Blanket. And she worked on this owl blanket during uh, I guess the morning, you know, while her mom was sick. And she says she still hasn't finished like their owl square, she still hasn't assembled it all together and figured out what she's going to do with it. But somebody had suggested it to give it to, to piece it together and give it to her daughter. But she felt like um, there's so much pain and sadness woven into it. But then she thought of her um, brother's eulogy. Um and how all we have left are the stories. And I realized how this blanket is the story of my daughter's grandmother. One I am still trying to tell. But that just gets me. So there's only like four more chapters left. Um, the next one is called Character Portraits. So um, and my husband is almost home from racing this weekend, you know. So... Um, we'll see. I don't think I'm going to get it done by the time he gets here, but oh my God, that chapter. Whew. Oh man, I got to distract myself and I, got, I deserve a cake right now because, oh my gosh, this next chapter or the chapter I just read with the character portraits or whatever, that was just as sad. Oh my gosh. She lost her dog and almost lost her dad. Oh my gosh. I just, I can't. I mean, I guess I knew all this was coming, but still. <sighs> anyway, so, um, and then she got, she got married and I guess her dad, you know, found new life. He got his teeth fixed for her wedding. They had a be beautiful wedding. This is a turtle cheesecake from Edwards brand. It's so delicious. 
so delicious. Totes recommend. It will soothe all the crying. I also took a little break and switched laundry to gather myself. And NASCAR is on and my husband's all, like, because it's a championship game or race and my husband's all excited about coming home and watching that. So, got to get these last few chapters done on this book real quick. Well, I guess I forgot to mention about what the character portraits even meant in that. Um, she was just talking about like how all the characters that she has played have come at, you know, the right time for what she's going through in her life. And so, um, yeah, she made some portraits to remember each of those moments. Well, the husband's back home and we're watching NASCAR or he, he's watching NASCAR. I will be watching a butterfly just flew by. Mm -hmm. Um, I will be watching more in depth once I finish this book and probably at the very end of the race. Um, because I, yeah, I mean, it's honestly all that matters. Uh, cause they have multiple stages. I don't know if you watch any of the NASCAR races. So I feel like when it gets closer to the last laps, it'll make, it, it will be more important for me to watch. But for now, this book is more important for me to finish reading. So this chapter was also sad and relatable for me. It, um, it was called Prayers to the Fer Fertility Gods in Copic Markers or whatever those markers are. So she was doing artwork, you know, to certain fertility gods, like over, um, since all this time has passed, like, she hasn't been like religious, but she's been more spiritual. And so she's, her and Ted had decided that they want to have kids. And, um, you know, being in her late thirties, she realized that it's a geriatric pregnancy. I feel like this is something that I've related with. And, um, my parents don't know this either. And so if they watch this, if my dad truly does watch this, he'll find out. Cause I've never, ever told him. But my husband has a vasectomy, and so, um, I mean, unless, yeah, so it would have to be like a Petri baby if I had one. It would have to be something IVF, but I mean, after reading this, it seems like me creeping in my late 30s, that's what it would be anyways. And it's something that I've discussed with my stepdaughter too, because, um, you know, just women talking to women that like, it was always a dream for me to be a mom. I feel like that's one of my purposes, but I don't think that that I've kind of accepted that that's something that's not going to happen. But like my stepdaughter is like, well, do it if you want to do it. Um, but I mean, now reading this, there's no way I would want to go through all the hormone injections all the am I pregnant or am I not pregnant um possibly losing you know I don't even want to know if I have any embryos or any um yeah available eggs like I don't even want to I would not even want to go through any of that I just I, I feel like it's just easier for me to accept that um I'm just only meant to be a stepmom and um, a grandma to my grandkids and be plenty happy with my incredible family. Like I just, I feel like that's a journey I just don't have in me to do, but sometimes it still makes me sad. But reading, reading her journey, I feel like, because I don't like needles. So that would be like a whole thing. And like from hearing from other people and seeing stuff in the movies like it does seem really tough and I don't especially after like what all we've been living through with the pandemic I just don't think I can and the world itself I feel like raising a kid right now is just so tough this dog here she's just gonna relax enjoying this beautiful weather again I thought she needed to go out potty in but I guess not I needed to come out here to tell y'all about that chapter anyways. So, 
Um, I didn't look ahead to see, or I don't remember what the next chapter name is, but I'll come back out and discuss more about that one too. Being a mom, being a woman, it's something else. And we are warriors for sure, right? OMG, who is this random ladybug that I scared away? Oh man, it smells like a mix of laundry out here and I think the neighbors are grilling. Okay, so let's talk about it. I just read another chapter and it was cute because this one really, you know, had to do with more yarn. It was called Baby Blanket, Creating My Own Patterns. Um, obviously you can figure out what all of that means. So, um, she adopted a, a baby and what's crazy about this is like when we watch like actors and stuff like that this is how I feel like their skill and their craft really come through because I mean while I watched younger I would never have known that she was going through fertility issues and then like becoming a mother you know like um how incredible it makes me want to go back and watch Younger again. Um, so happy for her. And also, what? Hilary Duff owns a llama. Oh my gosh, so crazy. And then she discussed in here about like uh, Lion Brand. And she mentioned Repeat Crafter Me too. Because that's how she learned about... Um, well, she learned from her aunt about Corner to Corner blankets which is so crazy um I feel I love corner to corner blankets and I do remember telling one of my friends about it too because she used to do granny squares all the time and I was like why are you doing granny squares you totally should you probably would love doing corner to corner and I introduced that to her and I'm telling you to this day she still like makes the corner to corner blankets they are just so addicting to do like I feel like it's way more meditating and it's fun to watch grow um it, and I feel like it creates a great texture, but it's not as much, like, not as gappy. So I guess she made, like, basically cornered, like, she realized that you can make your own, like, graph gans. And, um, so she made lots of blankets with different images that she's done or animals from before. Anyway, and, um, so she included also a pattern graph gan and instructions on doing corner to corner blankets and i it i think that it was in collaboration with lion brand um because they were copywritten on it and she used vanna choice oh oh you're making the tea you made the tea yeah. so i might have to make that badass blanket well Joey Logano has won the championship and I have one last chapter to read and it is dinner time. Okay, I had to come back outside because my husband's watching Sunday Night Football to be able to finish discussing the last chapter. Um, it was about the crafting, her crafting book. Um... I basically just closed everything out and talked a lot about Younger and the cast of Younger and like the journey of writing the book. Um, yep, Sutton Foster is even cooler in my book. In my book. <laughs> it is even cooler to me, you know. And I swear I shut the book because then I read the acknowledgments and I read about the author at the end. Um, she just seems like a really genuine person and I shut the book and I was like she is a pretty cool chick and Jeff was like a cool chick in your world I'm like no like in Broadway and on TV and stuff too and he's like yeah your world all of that is artsy fartsy and I guess yes <laughs> this um is actually my dog's blanket uh my dog's yeah all of the dogs use this blanket. It is a scrappy blanket that has all like all kinds of 
fibers in it like so much so there's even like look at that that's like wool that got felted it is hard 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 it's been washed so many times um like it's got loose strings and everything and it doesn't come unraveled somehow but i mean probably because there's felted pieces on it but um this is back before i understood the concept of different fibers and i was frogging it and gonna repurpose the yarn back in the day before it became the dog blanket but as i was doing it the dogs were enjoying it and so i only got like half the blanket frogged and my husband was like why don't you just let them have it and so i did um they have many blankets for just them now <laughs> But, um, yeah, I just washed this one. So, take it back in there. And I guess we'll close this out. And y'all let me know what you think. Are you going to read the book? Have you read the book? And, yeah, I feel like there are so many, like, yarny authors out there now. So, fill me in on maybe some people that they, you know i have another like yarny book that i want to read so i'll probably review that and share it too i think it's more of a fiction and i think that it's a series and this is like it's like a first book of the series so i might have to get the other books too we'll see anyway um nice surprise video i guess we'll close it out here